Okay, so now we have covered supervised learning and you're gonna now consider a comfortable in supervised learning yourself. Supervised learning is one of the very vast, vast topic in machine learning that you have covered very smoothly and I hope that you understood every, each and everything about supervised learning. If you have any kind of doubt, you can either ask in your Discord community or you can ask over to the uh, the, you can find the Discord community or you can come comment and then we can answer your questions. Okay, so uh, that so let's uh, let's start with unsupervised learning. So what actually in supervised learning we are doing? We have our data set which is xi as well as yi and we have i equals to one all the way down to the n. And actually we have one supervisor which is yi and we know what our output should look like means we know what our output should look like either be in continuous value which is either a regression problem or a classification or a classification okay so that that we know that our, what our output should look like okay so here so we know what our output should look like so now in case of so unsupervised learning there is no supervisor so in case of unsupervised learning we have only x i we have only x i okay x1 x2 x3 all the way around to the x i which covers i equals to 1 all the way around to the m okay so here in unsupervised learning we don't have any kind of supervisor that will that that will tell us what will our either output or will help us train our model okay and we, we we don't know what our output should look like either not in continuous and not in class classification so you so you cannot you cannot frame your problem and you cannot even frame because if you if you don't have your labels then then you cannot frame, frame it in a supervised learning problem so what i have to do what what we have to do so but i'm going to do just one or two just to specify that the data we, we have a structured data as well as unstructured data. Structured data as well as unstructured data and structured data is simply that which is in a tabular for format and unstructured data which is just images which, which cannot be fed on tables or CSV files okay or in Excel. Okay, so here, so uh, this is our unsupervised learning because uh, we, we don't have our output. Okay, so what, what we have to do? This is the main question to ask what we have to do if, if we don't have the labels. So let's consider, let's consider you have this, uh, you have this X and Y plane. Let me draw it very nicely. So the, the, in this section, I'm just going to, in this subsection, I'm just going to give you an overview understanding and some of the applications of unsupervised learning. Okay, so consider that you are working on uh, uh, just just you have your data points. Just you have your data points like this. You have your data points like this into an x and y plane onto the coordinate planes, and you have another data points which is like this. Okay, which is like this. And you may ask, hey Ayush, why can't we make a simple hyperplane? But you don't know, but you cannot frame it in classification problem. Just as a motivating example, I'm, I'm taking it as an example. Okay, so here just assume that you have this type of data set, okay, which is two dimensional. Either you can make the three dimensional also, you can make a three dimensional also just by converting this. And now let's consider that you have a three dimensional feature. So here you have this. Here you have another examples. Okay, so you have this. So now you only have the, these types of data points, which is this, this one is x1, x2, x3, these types of, okay? So in uh, unsupervised learning, in unsupervised learning, what you do, you make cluster of your data, which is closest to one point. You make cluster of your data, of your data. You make cluster of your data. So as a motivating example, let's take an example of uh, let's take an example that you want to uh, segment your customers okay uh, let's take an example that you are data scientist at amazon uh, some 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 companies so you are just uh, one or two uh, segment your customers so how you will segment your customers uh, so what to, uh, you you will uh, just segment your customers we have this data but you don't have the y labels so what you will do you will make the similar person into the one group 
similar person into the other group similar person let me do that my bad okay similar person and another group and similar person similar person similar person into the other group similar person and the other group so what you have done, you have divided your customers into segments. Now data scientists or business stakeholders, what they can do, they can decide that, okay, we can give these, uh, these customers a deal, these customers a deal basis on their activity, what they are doing, or we can make a sub on another machine learning model that will detect what they are dealing, what they want, okay? And, and we can recommend the products. We can recommend the products, let these these types of customers like milk, or like watching the jewelry on on maybe an, on Amazon. So here, uh, on, so on here, uh, you uh, it will show the products of books or maybe some jewelries which are interested. And here maybe they will show you some kitchen, uh, kitchen groceries. Maybe these uh, customers are interested in these. And then these customers maybe toys, maybe uh, some uh, TVs. Okay, so they will be recommended some products. And according to them, they earn a huge amount of money from recommending ads, etc. Okay, so so that's why you can see that how we how we frame our problem. And now you now it's quite clear to understand that as a as a motivating example of uh, customer segmentation, customer segmentation in Amazon. And and if you may think, hey, Ayush, if you see that, uh, let let me go to Amazon.com. You will see that I'm I'm being I'm being rec rec recommending, and they know what I recently view, what I recently view, and they are recommending the products. They are recommending the products, which you can see over here that they are recommending the products based on my views. Okay, so I'm I'm in some segment, I'm in some segment, and they are simply uh, recommending the basis products. And I hope that you understood. And, and I hope that you are understanding what I'm saying as an unsupervised framing the problem as an unsupervised learning. Okay, so that's what the cross customer segmentation or and uh, recommendation engine that is happening uh, in Amazon. Okay, so well, just uh, just see uh, just watch the too much talk videos on YouTube. Now what YouTube will do? YouTube will take yourself and add it in a segment of uh, the one who watches talks, and now they will show you dog ads maybe pedigree or etc whatever the food of the dog is or they will recommend you the videos of dogs okay so that's why we have customer segmentation as a motivating example and a recommendation is an as a motivating example so now i hope that is start making sense to you uh, to why we call this as an unsupervised learning okay now we so this is a this is a in, in supervised learning in supervised learning we have two two approaches we have two approaches which is the regression, which is the regression, and next one is specification. But in unsupervised learning, we have something called as clustering. Okay, so we cluster our outputs. We, and if you plot in higher dimensional space, then you will imagine that the most similar items are close to each other, and most dissimilar items are very much far away. Okay, so you can under understand like this. Okay. So let's take a let's take an motivating example again. Uh, so let's see some of the applications of unsupervised learning. So I will spend a little bit amount of time telling you about the applications of uh, unsupervised learning, and in the in this next subject, we will start with the making clusters. How what is intra, what is enter, how we do we make the cluster, how do we evaluate our cluster, etc. Okay. So uh, here I'm not talked about detail about clustering, about clustering, but I will definitely. But I just uh, told you that we divide our customer into segments. Okay. So here, um, here, uh, let's take an example. We have um, now we are taking the now we are taking a look at the applications. Now we are taking a look at the applications of unsupervised learning. So the first application of unsupervised learning is in biology which i have taken from wikipedia which is sequence analysis okay sequence analysis and it's simply uh, it's just put your gene um, just genes into the particular segment and this will help you in uh, various cases for biology student then you will understand then you will understand this uh, concept of sequence and analysis because you don't have what you do you segment your genes in a particular set segments and you can diagnose if this person has any kind of problem 
the next application which is in business which is in business uh, maybe grouping of similar clusters for business and needs so let's take an example that some company takes your data and then uh, then take your data and then simply group grouping the similar cluster grouping the similar similar clusters basis on the business need and they can see the clusters what they are what their activity is and they can provide deals offers according to their activity or the okay another thing is we have a uh, recommendation engine recommendation engine recommendation engine that recommends the products that recommends the product that we have seen okay so in recommendation you have content filtering collaborative filtering content filtering content filtering collaborative filtering okay so which you can see uh, which which have been, which is village advanced but i'm not going to talk about recommendation engine but as a motive example that that you whatever you see in amazon or google they just show you what you have seen so far because they have each and every because if you search anything you have the uh, they have that data okay for making ml models next is that in the uh, social network analysis facebook if you know about facebook uh, they 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 told hey they this this person has to uh, just share a post means that we do the social network analysis social network the means these per they 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 group customers into the segments they group customers into the segments the group customers into the segments and the pro and they show the accordingly uh, profiles okay another is we have in com computers uh, computer systems is we have our favorite in computer science we have image segmentation so what do i mean by image seg segmentation so you have an image you have an image and you segment your image you segment if you frame this problem as unsupervised learning so you ha have your image so you have your image like this and some someone is here someone is here someone is here so you segment these images segment these images okay uh, seg segment these images as a pixel bias you see that they are they have similar pixels so segmented uh, so so that's why you're saying segmenting and they, this can be used for classification or object detection object detection okay also uh, object detection like that okay so uh, just grouping your images into segments by using maybe pixels and etc okay because we don't have a uh, labels for bias Another motivating example in natural language processing it is sentiment analysis. Means uh, just to pro just seeing whether it be a negative or the positive. Okay, so what? Uh, let's take an example that you have this uh, that you, that we have this sentence. Okay, this sentence and another sentence. Okay, so it will group the positive sign sentence and the negative sentence. Okay, so now you will see now now you will see now what what you will do. You will go and see one of the sentence. You will go and go and see one of the sentence. Go and see the one of the sentence and see. Okay, if it is positive, then you label whole whole cluster, which is maybe ten thousand ten thousand uh, uh, sentences as a positive, and you take it as a to whole ten thousand maybe whatever the number of as a uh, negative. So may, let's let's take a let 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 me elaborate this NLP task of segment analysis. Let's take an example. Sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis. So, for an example, assume that you have a one uh, billion uh, text uh, data points in text, which are text textual. Okay. So, convert as a word embedding in numbers. Now, if it is very very hard to label, it will compute. If it, it will take time, it will take cost. It will take uh, because if you hire some people, you have to give them money. Okay. So, you have to label one billion. So how you have to do? So what you will do? You convert them into a uh, higher dimensional space, and you segment uh, the closest text, which is called the word embeddings. Closest word embeddings means the word embeddings, and sentences are here. And then then you see one sentence is from this cluster, one another sentence from this cluster. Now assume that this cluster is a positive sentence. You label all let's say 50 million as a positive, and whole 50 million as the negative. Okay, so uh, the, so you just require it to uh, just you don't require a lot of time for working with NLP tasks. Okay, so that's the uh, that's that's for NLP tasks. Another is anomaly detection. Okay, 
what is anomaly detection? And an and anomaly detection, an anomaly, we have anomaly, anomaly detection, anomaly detection, where we de de determine outliers in your model. So as an example, that you have the exact age like this, now assume that your data point is here. So this is actually outlier. This is actually outlier. So if you cluster it, if you cluster here, then this will be ignored and this 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 can help in, in uh, removing. But in uh, but using maybe the DB scan, isolation forest, they but most many of them maybe some K means uh, just take that out outlier into this cluster. Okay, so let's assume there is a then it is also closest to then take take that into that cluster. Okay, so we have a DB scan which helps us into an anomaly detection, which is again an unsupervised learning model. Okay, in, in a dense based reasons. Great, so we have seen a lot of applications of unsupervised learning. We have seen a lot, and I hope that you understood really. And in the ne in the next subsection, we will start talking about clustering. Okay, we will deep dive into the clustering to help you better understand the topic. We'll talk about clustering, we will talk about intercluster, intra cluster, how we evaluate our cluster, okay, how we, if we evaluate our data that, that we have a good clustering, what, what are the, some of the types of clustering like partial, hierarchical, okay, then we'll talk about center based, continuity based, density based, and then we'll talk about one formal center based algorithm which is K means clustering algorithm. Okay, and then we are done with supervised, unsupervised learning. Okay, and then I will give you a little bit overview of deep learning. Okay, so that you could better understand your deep learning uh, journey. Uh, just uh, if, if evaluation, and then we will do some projects based on machine learning, so that you could get more feel about machine learning, and you are more comfortable. And be sure to do the problem sets which are uploaded in GitHub to help you under understand the topic or master the topic. Okay, so that's it for this section, and I hope that you will that you have enjoyed this section. 